Good morning, third grade. Happy Monday. I hope you're having a good day so far. Um, we are back to decimals. And can I just tell you, friends, I was surprised over the top about how well you guys learned your decimals last week. I was doing a bunch of review with kids on that Thursday Zoom chat. If I didn't, if I, you didn't, weren't able to join on, I'm gonna get you um, tomorrow on Tuesday when we, uh, when I call you guys individually and maybe even in reading group today um, because I wanna make sure, but for the kids that came on, I couldn't believe how well you were reading the decimals back to me and you could do, Fraction to decimal, decimal to fraction, it was amazing. Okay, so this is a review for those of you who, over the weekend, your brain uh, melts away and you need a review <laughs> about what we're learning. Let's look up here. Okay, so remember, um, when we look at the decimal point to the right of the ones place, we have our tenths, hundredths, thousandths, right? If you're only one number after the decimal, we just say tenths, so that Let's not look at here, let's look at these, pretend there's a line right here. This would be seven tenths. This would be 52 hundredths. This would be 391 thousandths. So you always look at where it ends and go up. Seven tenths, 52 hundredths, 391 thousandths. Now remember, the decimal point means and. So we only want to say and when we see a decimal point. So on this one, it would be five and seven tenths, 16 and 52 hundredths, 23 and 391 thousandths, okay? If, and then um, remember, um, if we're writing them, so if I give you this and I say, how do I write five and seven tenths as a fraction, okay? If you have a number in the front, you're going to write that big, okay? So that's my big five. When you look past the decimal, these are the steps that we're going to look at. So first, we're going to write the numeral that we see, okay? So what numeral do I see here? Seven. That's going to be my numerator on top, okay? And then it says, count how many digits past the decimal. If there's only one digit, you're gonna put it over 10. If there's two digits, you're gonna put it over 100. If there's three dig digits, you're gonna put it over 1,000. So how many digits are there past the decimal? There's only one. When there's only one decimal digit past the decimal, we're gonna put a 10. And it makes sense, guys, right? Because we're saying five and seven tenths. So when we write it, five and, this is our and right here, this is where the decimal point would be, five and seven tenths, right? So how would we write this one? 16 and 52 hundredths, 16 and 52 hundredths. And when you read it like that, it makes it easy, I think. Let's look at the next one. 23 and 391 thousandths, 23 and 391 thousandths, just like that. Okay, so let's do some review stuff and see if some review flashcards and see if you can read these, okay? All right, so what's this one? Only one digit past the decimal. So we're gonna say nine tenths. Good job, written like this. Two, oh, three digits past the decimal. 21 thousandths, good. Three digits again, 121 thousandths. Excellent. Two digits, 81 hundredths, very good. I'm gonna fast forward through some of these. I wanna to get to a mixed number, here we go. How would I say this one? Three and seven tenths. Three and seven tenths. How about this one? Two and three tenths. Two, ooh, throwing cards. Two and three tenths. This one? 91 hundredths. 
seven tenths. Where did that come? Six tenths. Very good. Whenever there's only one digit that makes it easy, just say it over ten. Oh, this is tricky. Two hundreds. Good. Okay. Are you ready to try something more challenging? Okay. How would I write this as a decimal? Point something. How would I write it? Well, there's two numbers past the decimal, or two zeros, I should say. So we know it's going to have two point something something. So what will this be? It can't just be point three because see how there's two zeros. That means I have to have two digits past the decimal. Point zero three. Good job. Okay, let's try another one. Ooh. There's also only one number up here, but there's three zeros. If there's three zeros, we need one, two, three digits past the decimal. How do I write this with three digits? Point zero zero one. Good job, you guys. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, so eight tenths. How do I write that? Point eight, yeah. Whenever, remember, whenever it's over 10, it's just going to be, if it's, if it's 4 over 10, 0.4, 6 over 10, 0.6, 9 over 10, 0.9. Okay, how about this one? Ooh. So this is my number in front of the decimal. Remember, imagine the little word and here. So we're going to have a point here. So 1.1. 1. 1.1 1. 1 is 1 and 1 tenth. Ooh, good job. Let's try this one. Okay. Point what? Point 61. Two zeros, two digits. Point 61. Three digits. Point zero zero two. Yeah, we got to make three digits. Point zero zero two. Four point nine. 4.9 is 4 and 9 tenths. 0.31. Good. Whenever you see it over 100, think of money. If I had 31 pennies out of 100, I have 31 cents. And this is how I would write 31 cents, 0.31. I would need a dollar sign, right? Zero and a dollar sign. But this is 31 cents. This is how I would write it. So whenever it's out of 100, think of money. That kind of helps. Okay, guys. All right, so let's look at our paper. I am going to share my screen. And today is just a review day, so we're class practice. We're not learning anything new with our decimals. We're just practicing what we've been learning. So today will be a good day to kind of see where you're at. I will have you do some by yourself so that I can see when I call you which ones um, were easy and which ones were hard for you. Okay? Oops. Let me move this over. Okay, so my first one is 0.6. I actually prefer to start reading the words and then matching. So let's read this word first. 37 hundredths. Which one is showing 37 hundredths? Yeah, this is the only one that says 37 even, right? So that makes it easy. 0.37 is 37 hundredths. Okay, next one, one tenth. Ooh, there's two ones. So which one is one tenth? Remember, tenth, there's only one digit past the decimal. Good. So it's got to be this bottom one. Six tenths. There's only one six, point six, that's right. One hundredth. No, oh, there's two ones left. Hundredth has how many digits? Two. One, two. So point zero 0.01 is one hundredth. Three and eight tenths. Remember, and just means decimal point. So 3.8 tenths. Where is that? 3.8, right there. Three and eight tenths, 3.8. Okay, 62 hundredths. Oh, there's only one 62, so it's got to be that, point 0.62. One thousandth. Thousandth has three digits past the decimal. One, two, three. Good job. Twenty-one and 
84 hundredths. There it is, 21 and 84 hundredths. Good job, you guys. I should have had you try to match that by yourself and then check it, see if you got it right. Okay, let's do that for this next part. So if you wanna pause the video or watch me do a couple and then pause it, let's see how many of these you get right by yourself. Okay, so six tenths. What is my first thing I'm gonna do? Well, I'm gonna count how many digits, how many zeros are there? Okay, there's one zero. So I know there's only gonna be one digit past the decimal. So it's gonna be point something. Well, point six, right. Let's look at 15 hundredths. Two zeros, so there's gonna be two digits past the decimal. 15 has two digits, so I'm just gonna write that. 375 thousandths, thousandths has three zeros, so there's gonna be three digits past the decimal. 375 has three digits, so I can just write it like that. 0.375 means 375 thousandths. Okay, let's try E. 17 hundredths. Two zeros, two spaces past the decimal. 17 fifths, perfect. Two zeros, two digits past the decimal. 38 has two digits, so that works. Five tenths, one digit past the decimal. And five only has one digit, so that works. Hey, there was no tricky ones there. Okay, try, if you didn't do it yet, do D and H by yourself. These are gonna be ones that I check, okay? Do those two by yourself. All right, let's go down to this next part. So it says, write each decimal as a fraction. This would be a great place to pause if you feel confident. If you're a little nervous, do the first couple ones with me and then pause it. Okay, so what do I do first? Well, I look at the number 53. Whatever the number is, write that on top of your line. Okay, then you count how many digits past the decimal? Two. Remember, if there's one digit, we put it over 10. If there's two di digits, we put it over 100. So I'm gonna put this over 100. If there are three digits, we put it over 1,000. So this says 53 hundredths. If you wanna draw your line better, you can. Okay. So write my number, it's a seven, draw my line. There's only one digit, so what's it gonna be? Seven tenths. Okay, so you should be able to do this one next. It's just like seven tenths, but it's 0.9, so it's gonna be nine tenths. Good job. All right, oh, look at 0.3, same thing. 0.7, seven tenths, 0.9, nine tenths, 0.3, Three tenths, good job. Okay, look at our next one. Ooh, we've got three numbers, 613. So 613 is what I write on top. How many digits past the decimal? Three, so I'm gonna have three zeros. 613 thousandths over a thousand. Okay, look at our next one. Four, I could write it zero, zero, four. Or I could just write it four. I'm just gonna write it four. Four over what? Four over a thousand. Why over a thousand? Because there are three digits. I need to have three zeros. Okay, everybody do these two by yourself, D and H. These are the ones I'm gonna check when I talk to you later, today or tomorrow. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna look at our metric prefixes. Those are like kilo, centi, milli, deca, deci, all those. those are, that's what we're gonna look at right now, okay? Remember, the ones with the I in them, centi, deci, milli, those are all the fractions, okay? So that's gonna help us when we're doing it. Okay, so let's look at our first one. I'm gonna make this big so we can see it well. Okay, so we're on um, 4A. 4A is what we're on. Okay, so one over a thousand. Well, that's a fraction, so I know it's gonna end with an I. Do you remember what the thousand 
with an I is? Millie, that's a hard one. So if you forgot that, it's okay. Just write it in, Millie, M-I-L-L-I. -L -L -I. Okay, now look right under it. See the regular thousand with no fraction? Do you remember what thousand means? Some of you might have said this for A. Kilo, that's right. K-I-L-O means kilo. Kilogram, yeah. Okay, so let's look at hundred. There's no fraction, so it's not gonna end in an I. Hundred hecto, hecto hundred. Good job, guys. All right, let's look at E. Oh, there is a fraction here, one-tenth. Deci, good job. D-E-C-I, deci. Oh, we have another fraction, one over a hundred. What was hundred? with a fraction, with the I. Centi, good. Centi. Okay, and then 10, it's not gonna be deci, because that one was the fraction. Regular 10 is deca. Good job. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out so you can see all six of those. Make sure you have those written correctly. Milli, kilo, hecto, deci, centi, and deca. All right. Multiplying carefully, guys. Okay, I'm going to have you try this one by yourself and this one by yourself, okay? Remember, I'm not going to do one and one half. I'm going to do a different one. Let's say it was two and one third. How do I change that, guys? I multiply. Two times three is six plus one is seven. So this would be seven thirds if I was changing it. You're gonna have to change this one, okay? I'm gonna check that later and see how you guys do. Okay, let's go to the back. And I wanna do this word problem with you guys together. I'm using this side of my paper here for my scratch paper, but you guys are gonna wanna get some scratch paper out because this is, a, this is a, um, one that we have to do a lot of writing with. Okay, so it says, Jasmine, Robin, and Heidi are singing as a trio during the children's church. They decided to have their mothers make matching dresses for them. Jasmine needed two and two tenths meters of material. Robin needed two and six tenths meters. And Heidi needed two and one tenth meter of material. How many meters did they need in all? Change the decimals to fractions before adding. Change the fraction answer back to a decimal. Okay, so you notice when I read it, I didn't say 2.2, 2.6, 2.1. What did I say? Two and two tenths. Two and six tenths. If I read my decimals correctly, it makes it really easy to write them as fractions. So watch. Two and two tenths. Two and six tenths. Two and one tenth. That's what those decimals said. 2.2 .2 would be written like that, 2.6 and 2.1. Okay, so it says, how many meters did they need in all? Who remembers what in all means? It means to add, that's why I drew the addition sign. Okay, it does say change the decimals to fractions before adding, so they gave you a hint there too. Okay, since all my bottom numbers match, friends, all I have to do is add. Two tenths plus six tenths plus one tenth is nine tenths, good job. Let's add up the next ones. Two plus two plus two, six. Six and nine tenths. So six and nine tenths is my answer, but they want me to put that as a decimal. How do I write six and nine tenths? Six and, remember the decimal is my and, how do I write nine tenths? Just a nine, point nine. Good, you're never gonna write the number on the bottom. So like if it said nine hundredths, I would just write 6.09 or if it said nine thousandths, 6.009. So 
Whenever you see the tenth or the hundredth or the thousand, you're not going to write any extra numbers for those. It just tells you how many digits past the decimal. So zero only has one digit, so nine tenths only has one digit past the decimal. Okay, good job, friends. All right, let's look at second word problem, letter B. Devin's dad drove at the average speed of 59 miles per hour for nine hours. How many miles did he travel? Okay, so he went 57 miles per hour for nine hours. So I'm gonna draw little jumps for every hour he drove. One hour, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's my nine hours of driving. Each hour, he drove 57 miles. 57, 57, 57, 57, 57, 57. Okay, if I want to know how many miles he, drew, he drove, is it going to be bigger than 57 or less than 57? Bigger, obviously, because he did 57 every hour. So in order to make my answer bigger, I either have to add or multiply. What do you think we should do here, guys? Yeah, multiply is gonna be easier than adding just because that's a lot of 57s to plus up, right? 57 times nine will get me the exact same answer. So let's do that. Nine times seven is 63. Nine times five is 45, what's 45 plus six? 51. So he drove 513 miles. Good job, friends. Okay, so we did both those word problems together, so you don't have to do those on your own. We're gonna do one of the adding and one of the subtracting together of the fractions, and then you guys are gonna do one by yourself, okay? So I'm gonna do A and D with you guys. All right, so let's look at A. Do my bottom numbers match 16, eight, and four? They do not. I need to make them match. How can I make them match? What number can I count, can I get if I count by four, eight, and 16? 16, good job guys. So let's do our 16s. This one's already a 16, so I'm just gonna bring it over. Eight times what makes 16? Eight times two. So five times two is 10. Four times four makes 16. So one times four is four. Okay, let's add these up. What's three tenths plus 10, sorry, three sixteenths plus 10 sixteenths plus four sixteenths. That gets me 17 sixteenths. Uh-oh, that's improper. I can't leave a 17 on a 16, right? So, um, let's go ahead and throw that 17 into the division house and divide. This is going to be an easy divide, isn't it? So 1 and 1 16th is what I got here. But this is not my final answer because I need to add it with whatever I get here. So let's add it. What's 6 plus 8 plus 5? 6 plus 8 is 14. 14 plus 5 is 19. So what is 19 plus one and one sixteenth? That's right, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do an equal sign, 20 and two, oh, sorry, not two sixteenths, 20 and one sixteenth, and there's no reducing needed. So this is my answer for A. Okay, I want you guys to do B by yourself. So hopefully I didn't, make that too much into your A. But do B by yourself, this one here, okay? All right, let's, I'm gonna do D with you and then you're gonna do C by yourself also, okay? So B and C are the ones to do by yourself. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna erase this, sorry. Okay, so do my bottom numbers match, friends? No, they don't. Let's make a match. 16 again, isn't that funny? Okay, this one's already a 16. This one is not. So I need to change it. Eight times two is 16. One times two is two. Okay, can I take five sixteenths from two sixteenths? 
Here's two fingers, put five down. We can't, we're only gonna put two down. So where can the two get more from? That's right, the 89. Cross out your 89 and make it an 88. And what am I gonna add? I have to look at the bottom number, guys. It's a 16. Whatever the denominator is, that's what you give them matching. So if it was an eight on the bottom, you would give them eight eighths. If it was a nine on the bottom, nine ninths. This is a 16, so I have to give 16 sixteenths. So it's two sixteenths plus 16 sixteenths. 18 sixteenths minus five sixteenths equals what? What's 18 minus five? 18 minus five is three. Oh, sorry, 13, 13 sixteenths. And then we need to subtract our 88 minus 76. What's eight minus six? Two. Eight minus seven, one. So my final answer is 12 and 13 sixteenths. This is my answer. Okay, friends. So what did we do so far by ourselves? We did four on the front, no, six on the front, and two on the back. Okay, so I'm gonna let you have off E, F, and G, but I do want you to do this part now, okay? By yourself, matching those, all right? Any extra ones that you wanna do, awesome, do it, okay? But you don't have to, because I already had so many on there um, chosen, okay? So I want you to do eight, I want you to do C and B here, and I want you to do E and C and D and H and D and H. Okay, so everything highlighted in that purple pink color, that's what you're gonna do on your own. Okay, friends? All right, I'll stop sharing this. Okay, friends, so I will, um, today's Monday. So in reading group today, if you could log on a little bit early, I can go through and check some of these with you. It'd be fun to do for me. If not, on Tuesday, um, I will go through this and Tuesday's page. So we'll do two math pages on Tuesday. If I don't, if you don't log in early on reading group or stay after, you can log on early or stay a little after. Okay, friends, I love you guys and I will see you at reading group. Bye-bye.